A new sip now on BBC Thor Ahead takes the straight and narrow. of our good Queen Victoria, there was a religious revival and thousands of churches were built by all the different denominations. In you go, in you go there, there we are. Well, a famous architect, J.L. Pearson, built this one, St. Michael and All Angels, for High Anglicans. Now, the one I showed you down the road was built for the famous preacher, Charles Spurgeon, a Baptist. He preached to literally thousands of people every Sunday. Time shall soon Do you know, be he was so famous, Eternity the manager of Drury Lane Theatre said, Death I would give a large Eternity amount of money if I could get Spurgeon on the stage. And it was because of that that he became good at it. He was a great actor. And what did he do with his God-given gift? He made the Bible and the Word of God popular with everybody. Yeah, and that's what I want you to help me to do during the next four weeks. Right. They may look like little terrors, but they sing like little angels. Now, I want you to look at this poster, The Broad and Narrow Way. You see, whichever church you went to, if you were a Victorian Christian, all you had was the Bible poster to teach you the difference between right and wrong. Will you stop that, Glenn, please? Just stop it, because you see, this poster is much more interesting than your electrocuted hedgehog. <laughs> oh, shame. Yeah, and you too, Darren. Which Darren, shame. stop it. <laughs> Would you mind getting me the poster down, love, please? Look, now look at this, see? Look, welcome down here. Welcome, that is uh, the Broadway walk. Look at it, all the way to the hell fire. There. Oh, see? See that? Now, can you see this little narrow one here? Here, yeah, down here, yeah, lads. Yeah. Well, look, if you follow that all the way up there, see how tiny it is? And it goes all the way to heaven. Uh, have you seen the little texts? I mean, look, a tiny little text. Look, look, there's one here. Enter at the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many go in there. Oh! oh. Look, and look at that big eye. What does that say, Glenn, under there? 1 Peter 3.12. Oh. Oh. 
and dots. First of Peter, chapter 3, verse 12. The eyes of the Lord look on the righteous. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. What would your ideas be about heaven? Just a really big area, and each person's got their own spot, and whatever happens in that spot is what they want it to be, and it's all their dreams come true. Anybody else any ideas about heaven? Yes? I think, like, when you're in heaven, and you want to maybe, like, you've got a problem, and you want to talk to God about it, you can just wish, and you're there in front of him. Well, do you know what I think it's like? I think it's like a lovely picnic in a beautiful garden in June. Oh. Now, never mind the ooze, I haven't finished yet, on a beautiful day, surrounded by beautiful roses. Never will be exciting. Must have all the latest computer games. Oh, oh. the best. Then you can get away. Yes, but no, well, well, I mean, it's fortunate that these journeys we've taken were only pretend. You see, when I was your age, things were told to me very simply, so that if I was good, I would go to heaven. If I was wicked and bad, I could end up in hell. Now, what do you think? Uh, I think hell is like lo lots and lots of devils using angels as slaves. That would be dreadful. Well, I think the nearest I can get is that it might be like being in a roaring, raging furnace. I was taken to an ironworks once when I was about your age. Oh, and I was scared. <laughs>
loads on the poster ends. So now we should take a closer look at the poster itself before we start on our musical tour of the Broad and Narrow. Forward. Can anybody hear anything except me? A mighty chorus way up high. I heard the angels sing. Praise the name of Jesus. Singing in the choir in the sky. I heard a thousand trumpets sounding out his glory. Telling the story how he came to a good night. I heard a million voices. Praise the name of Jesus. Singing in the choir in the sky. I heard the glorious song. Out of heaven, the sweetest music ever heard. I heard a mighty song sung by all the angels. My soul filled a very loving word. I heard a thousand trumpets sounding out his glory, telling the story how he came to earth to die. I heard a million voices praise the name of Jesus, singing in the fire in the sky. I heard a Shouting out the glad amen, I fell upon my knees, praise the man in heaven, I would hear the cry once again. I heard a thousand trumpets sounding out his glory, telling the story how he came to earth to die. I heard a million voices, praise the name of Jesus. This gentleman is my island of sanity on this very complicated journey. He is here to reassure me that all the most memorable tunes, the liveliest tunes, the gayest tunes, happiest tunes, do not belong on the Broadway. You see, somebody told me that all the lively tunes, the gay tunes, all that sort of thing, belong to the devil. Now say it isn't so, Carlo. Throw a treasure. It isn't so. Because I want oh, convincing, yes. you see. Let's go back to Johann Sebastian Bach, the man who I think invented rock and roll because his music has so much vim and vigor, red-blooded in every on, way. Man. His great Toccata and Fugue in D minor, just the beginning bits. What an acclamation, proclamation. A great chord. Yeah, but it wouldn't sound so good on the guitar on its own, would it? Oh, no, no, not exactly. That does, though, when this big Alan Touring organ is in a cathedral or a big hall yeah, when I go yeah. out to play concerts, that sound can part here at 50 paces. Oh, yes, that, you've convinced me up to now, but I just need the little... A little, little more, more. yes, yeah. I see. Listen, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, let's travel across the pond to my part of the world. You know this tune. <laughs> that is you're in America. What about this one? <laughs> no, it's enough of that. That really upsets me. <laughs> no, it does look. I love to see you upset. No, no, no. Think, do you know then another one, this one, which starts... Organists are just frustrated yes. singers. You yes, know. yes, it's beautiful. The holy city. And the whole, now then, you see, you, you're playing things that do convince me because <laughs> that was part of my mother's repertoire. And I hope everybody can see that you're doing the tap dance on the floor. Now, the size 12s are occupied. Yes, but this always intrigues me. <laughs> With all those pieces of wood, I don't know how you know which one to put your foot on. Well, you know, it's about the only thing I do. In this fairly is beautiful. Well. It is beautiful, isn't it? It's a gorgeous sound. To hold these. It really is very beautiful. But you know, the organ can also whisper, but the beauty of it is a gamut machine. It can proclaim, and my big touring organ has fantastic lungs. If I give you just a dose of one of the great bridal processions, Purcell, this will give the devil cause to escape. Wish I had a hate me. Every time you play this. 
that every time people would walk down the aisle to it. Woo! Well, it's so long ago since I was married, 56 years, that I can't remember since that's when we came out. This is what you come out to, isn't it? Mm, I can yeah. give, I can, or you can go down to it. I mean, just, yeah, I but listen, here we go. Handel's Largo, where a countertenor was singing in the opera, thanking a tree for affording him shade. <laughs> but it's one of God's great yeah, tunes. Beautiful. Oh, the devil couldn't have thought of that one. No, no. no own it, I'll admit. Although when you come to think of it, almost anything you care to mention seemed to lead to hell and damnation in those days. Well, by some of the stricter parsons. Why, even the theatre was regarded as a den of iniquity. <laughs> Angela! Who? Angela! Angela, try and keep it down, love, would you please? Because I'm just trying to teach the boys a few manners. Thank you. Thank you. You see, I can see why they didn't approve of gambling houses. All those loan sharks. But I don't know why that rather nice looking ballroom over there was frowned upon. I have some very fond memories of my father's ballroom on the central pier in Morecambe. Glenn, look, will you get on with your tea? No, Mr. So rude. I can see that you're going to need discipline to have you behave. Look, I think I'd better enlist myself in God's own army. Well, we all have to fight the good fight, you know. The forces of darkness are always lying in wait to pounce on you if you don't stay in the light. and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image. At the sight of kindled in mine anger, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about, seeing whom he may be. save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The highest glory of our holy religion is the cross. The history of grace begins earlier and goes on later, but in the middle point stands the cross. Of two eternities, this is the hinge. 
of past decrees and future glories, this is the pivot, the vindication of divine justice, the unexampled display of God's love, a marvel of wisdom, a door of hope, a source of rest. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. It was a white throne. The king who sits on it is pure. The judgment he dispenses is perfect. The throne is eminently conspicuous. All the millions who were dead, but who shall rise at the sound of the trumpet, shall see it. It is a great white throne because of the greatness of him who sits upon it and because of the matters that will be tried there. The gates of mercy are not closed. If you can get a grip of the cross, God himself cannot smite you. And the last tremendous day shall dawn upon you with splendor and delight and not with gloom and terror. I'm a great believer in preaching and I look back to some of the great preachers of the past and I'm thrilled with the way that they performed and the things that they said. And I believe there is, there is need today for a rediscovery of good preaching. It needn't be very lengthy, it needn't be very flowery, but I actually believe it can be pertinent, it can touch the heart, and I think it's a wonderful method and a wonderful medium of getting the message across. So I'm a believer in preaching. Mm, mm. Look, don't start leaning out the window, putting your heads out. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Be careful with my umbrella. Yeah. 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 Now this may surprise you, boys. A Sunday train. And why has it stopped right at the entrance to hell? You see, when our poster was painted, the railways were very new, but they were constructing them all over Britain. And of course it was very hard work and it took a long time then to work seven days a week and they had to go over people's land they even had to go over church land they even had to go through the graveyards oh and there were some thrilling stories about decaying bodies all piling up on the railway embankments yeah. so it was a time like now when advisors were needed to point everyone back to the narrow way. Navy missions were formed to educate the navvies and to warn them that they weren't just in physical danger, it was moral danger too. They were on the broad way. One navvy missioner who became very famous was a woman called Mrs. Elizabeth Garnet. The life and working conditions of the navvies is scandalous. Day and night is given over to drunkenness and swearing. They earn very little, and they have to work in such dangerous conditions. Many navvies are killed digging the tunnels. These souls are not all bad. The work is hard, the temptation strong, and many of them are transformed when they are told about the wonderful love and saving grace of God. Why, one big man, who used to be a hard drinker, now spends each spare moment writing poems. He gave me this one yesterday, and I think it's very good. I've navvied here in Scotland, I've navvied in the south, without a drink to cheer me, or a crust to cross my mouth. I fed when I was working, and I starved when out on tramp, and the stone has been my pillar, and the moon above my lamp. I have drunk my share and over when I was flush with tin, for the truth without was nothing to the truth that burned within. And where'er I've filled me billy, and where'er I've drained me can, I've done it like a navvy, a bold navvy man. A bold navvy man, an old navvy man, safe in a ditch with eels cocked up, so dies the navvy man. Amen.
What is it, love? Um, well, shouldn't you have the red umbrella? Because we... It's oh, white thanks. For heaven and white for heaven, red for hell. Thanks for reminding me. Now, remember, once you've gone to heaven, or, of course, it could be the other place, you can't change your mind. So remember our poster, because between those two places, there's a great gulf fixed. Keep your voices so that people can hear what you say and make it interesting, and do be careful with your scripts. I'm telling myself all that, you know, because I thought I wasn't very good in that rehearsal, and that's the truth, so I'm going to be better now. You're ready, good luck, and wait for the light. There was once a rich man who dressed in expensive clothes and lived in luxury every day. There was also a poor man named Lazarus who used to be brought to the rich man's door, hoping to eat the bits of food that fell from the rich man's table. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham in heaven. The rich man died and was buried, and in Hades, where he was in great pain, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. Father Abraham, take pity on me and send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm in great pain in this fire. What Abraham said, Remember, my son, in your lifetime, you were given all the good things, whilst Lazarus got all the bad things. But now he is enjoying himself here, while you are in pain. Besides all that, there is a deep pit lying between us so that those who want to cross over cannot do so. Then I beg you, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my father's house, where I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they, at least, will not come to this terrible place. Your brothers have Moses and the prophets to warn them. Your brothers should listen to what they say. That is not enough, Father Abraham. If someone was to rise from death and go to them, then they would turn from their sins. If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone were to rise from the dead. Well done, lads. Thank you. Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. I just think whoever thought up the idea of this particular poster and traveling through it, it's a wonderful imaginative idea because you see, the Christian life, indeed the whole of life, is a journey. I mean, the heart of the Christian life is taking up our cross and following Christ, and it's following along a journey, and we simply follow him day by day. And that doesn't isolate it from the world, it takes us into involvement with the world in its suffering and in its need. And the lovely thing about these two, where's Thora? Don't mind me saying this just to finish off, is that with God, it's possible to change from one path to the other. The fact that we take a wrong turning doesn't mean that God's got it in for us. If we start off on the broad way, it's very easy with the help of God to come back onto the narrow way. And even if we actually stray from the narrow way onto the broad way, God is there, ready to bring us back. It's a wonderful picture, this poster. Yes, it is. And it's a wonderful thought. Being close and being clever is not like being true. I don't need to, I would never hide a thing from you. Like so. We've been to heaven and we've been to hell tonight. But as Charles Spurgeon himself once said, 
As sure as ever God puts his children in the furnace, he will be there in the furnace with them. Now, next week, the Angel Voices and I will examine the poster's two entrances to the broad and narrow way and discover how to be strong enough to choose the right one. If you do choose correctly, then as Angela is telling us, nothing is going to harm us. Nothing.